Schools that successfully implement social and emotional learning school-wide offer explicit SEL instruction using evidence-based programs and practices. We'll visit two Ohio schools that offer well-structured SEL lessons that are built into the school schedule. The regular schedule gives teachers the opportunity to demonstrate and reinforce what they taught throughout the day and gives students the opportunity to frequently reflect on their own social and emotional development. Explicit social and emotional learning means that students are actively engaged in curriculum and instruction in terms of really learning about what are core social and emotional competencies. So they are engaged in activities that help them identify who they are as individuals, help them identify their emotions, help them identify their feelings, help them learn how to manage those feelings, make good decisions, and uh, form positive relationships. There are numerous evidence-based programming out there around students' social and emotional development. And those programs provide an opportunity to understand what those core competencies are and actually provide teachers active instruction and authentic ways to engage students in developing them. Just west of downtown Cleveland, Elmira School has adopted Cleveland Metropolitan School District's own SEL curriculum, in addition to two nationwide evidence-based programs. Elmira's own curriculum is based on a circle model and is used at every grade level, kindergarten through eighth grade. The class gathers in a circle and the meeting consists of a greeting, activity, announcements, and a closing. We have that protocol built and many people find it difficult to come up with activities because we certainly promote this done on a daily basis. So with our teaching staff, we built a K-8 to and a high school uh, ring book, we call it, which has activities to be utilized during class meetings so that you can come up with them on your own, you can use the activities that we've built, and hopefully you've moved your class meetings from teacher built to student run. In the lower grades, students might walk into the classroom, they might form a circle. How are you feeling today? They will actually put a post-it note on a feelings poster on what level they're feeling and they will later on explain why they're feeling a specific way. They might put that they're happy and then when the teacher asks them why they're happy, they can share the good news with whatever is going on in their lives to uh, their classmates, but that will also help build self-confidence and when it comes to self-efficacy, it really helps motivate them. One of the keys to Elmira School's success in implementing SEL school-wide lies in scheduling. SEL is taught at the beginning of the school day, every day, on the same footing as academic instruction. In addition, separate SEL assemblies happen each quarter. On our half day most recently, we had an SEL day that was student-led. Uh, we had a small team of student mediators get in front of the students, uh, provide examples of what bullying looks like, um, what to do in case you are bullied, and to make sure that you, you tell somebody if you are going through um, any types of issues with any other students. We also provided examples, not just with students acting them out and talking to students about it, but we also provided video examples as well. A little further south of Cleveland is the Facing History New Tech High School, which takes a different approach. They have purchased an existing curriculum, which has a focus on changing school culture we do culture building things. So it's just working in groups, getting to know each other. And I meet with them the first week of school in small groups. And you know, the largest group I might have is 25 kids. And my message to them is pretty clear. They're gonna make mistakes. Uh, I was a teenager, I made mistakes. Um, learning from those mistakes, talking through those mistakes, um, not doing the same mistake over and over and over again. That's what we're looking for. I think that a lot of our social emotional learning comes through the curriculum and the idea of showing respect for all people and not just tolerance of all people but more embracing our differences and also plugging into our commonalities and developing a community of respect and ultimately trust. When that can be formed then the community is even stronger I mean, res respect is like the baseline, and then trust is the next level. 
Each school day begins with the scheduled advisory class, part of the school's evidence-based program. It is an instructional time with the goal of integrating the love for technology, professionalism, and work ethic with the values of respect for all people and understanding and embracing our differences. In advisory, there's the element of mentoring though, and that's why we have all grade levels, nine through 12 in there, so that older students can model and help mentor younger students. And then I get to loop with those students. Sometimes we'll talk about something we call peaks and valleys, which is just an emotional high and emotional low, maybe for the past week. Or other times we might ask them to check in about grades or how they feel, goal setting. And sometimes they'll share maybe a personality conflict with a teacher or something they don't understand in a class. And because they've spent a year or two with me, maybe they're willing to ask me. Or, or I can even be like a liaison and reach out to the teacher and say, hey, um, this student's having a problem with this in your class and is there any way we can figure it out? No matter the approach to explicit SEL, one thing is clear, the relationship is a critical part of the strategy. The more that each individual student is able to be self-aware, to be uh, aware of their peers and socially aware, to have empathy for people who are different from them or who are having a different experience or a different perspective, all of those things enable connection, which enables learning. When we were in the classroom earlier today and the third grade teacher got right on the same level as those children, talking face to face. And I can tell you right now, as you go around the circle, everybody has positive things going on in their life and some might have some negative, okay? But the key thing is, is when you get face to face with a child, what she was doing, she was building relationships. And when you build relationships, I always tell uh, staff, the sky is the limit. It is the limit. You can do pretty much whatever it is you want. That's where it makes that a lot easier. It makes things more fun and joyful, especially when you're teaching in the classroom.